السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ سو انشاءاللہ دس از ا ویری ویری امپورٹنٹ بیان اٹس اباؤٹ دی ایٹیکیٹس اف باتھ روم ہاؤ ٹو یوز باتھ روم اٹ ہیز ٹو ڈو وتھ طہارہ اینڈ وی ار گوئنگ ٹو شیئر سم ویری امپورٹنٹ انفارمیشن سو انشاءاللہ our brothers and sisters who will watch it inshallah on the youtube uh we are humbly requested to watch the whole thing uh and do not fast forward the video because then you will miss a lot so um hey everyone kindly stay alert right and this uh, stuff has to do how to use bathroom and what is the islamic concept of tahara purification inshallah um I will say it, inshallah, mashallah, mashallah. So I humbly request everyone to stay alert and um, uh, pay attention, please, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wallahu yuhibbul mutatahirin. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala sayyidina. محمد مبارک وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد مبارک وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد مبارک وسلم It's a very important verse uh, I believe verse number 108 of surah Tauba in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised people sahaba-i karam the noble companions ridwan allah alayhim ajma'in uh and they subhanallah in it are the people who wish to thoroughly cleanse themselves and allah loves clean so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this Aya has praised noble companions and they, I believe they were the people of the tribe of Quba. Now, what is a general cleaning? It's some, something that looks clean. And what is Islamically clean? There are two different things. So we are going to understand what is the islamic concept of purification tahara so inshallah kindly uh, stay with me uh, and pay attention inshallah and we pray uh, that moon is cycled and there's eat tomorrow right inshallah. we are all for unity according to quran and sunnah right yes alhamdulillah unity has to be quran and sunnah based right نجاست حقیقی and you all can say it with me so I know you're, you're all away نجاست right? uh, نجاست so I have double job one to give beyond to make sure everybody is awake right? number three I have to keep myself awake right? uh, ماشاءاللہ uh, نجاست حقیقی نجاست حقیقی which can be seen نجاست غلیزہ ڈینس ٹائپ نجاست خفیفہ لائٹ ٹائپ نجاست حکمی وچ کین ناٹ بی سین حدث حدث اصغر مینس دا پرسن نیڈس ہدو پرسن نیڈس حدث اکبر person needs ghusl e wajib so we'll uh, try to uh, understand but uh, subhanallah it means allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad okay so let's start with wudu when we
there are four faraid of wudu there are people need to understand dear muslims that there are four sources of our religion how many four sources we cannot leave even one of them we cannot leave we leave one of them will go astray we will i'm telling you i can be as straightforward as i possibly can be number one quran number two hadith and sunnah number 3 ijma'i sahaba all sahaba their graves are gardens of gardens of paradise their graves are each and every one of them each ridwan allah wa lahum ajma'in ridwan allah wa lahum number 4 ijtihad and qiyas of aima arba imam abu hanifa imam Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, rahmatullah alayhim. Right? Muhaddisin have a different role. Muhaddisin, Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, Imam Tirmizi, Ibn Majah, Nasai, Abu Dawood, and Imam Bayhaqi, and so forth and so on. There are quite a few others as well. Right? So they have a different role. Fuqaha have a different role. Fuqaha have a different role. Huh? So please trust your imam. Trust. Huh? If you are going to be benefited, show proper adab to your imam and trust your imam. Hmm? Because imam is not. Imam is putting you, inshallah, on sirat mustaqim. Huh? Sirat mustaqim. We need to understand because you are all young, and mashallah, you are the leaders of tomorrow. You are. Right, so you need to understand these things. All these things work. Right? So the four sources of our religion. So uh, these fuqahai karam, these have determined these terminologies. Determined these. Uh, what is farad? What is? What is wajib? What is? Sunnat al-Waqqada. Sunnat al-Ghayr-Waqqada. Sunnat al-Mustahabba. Makruh al-Tanzihi. Makruh al-Tahrimi. Haram and Halal. So it's very important that we understand this. We are at a very delicate time of human history. Okay? We are facing, especially here in America, we are facing a lot of challenges. To protect the iman of our youth, right? Protect the iman of our youth. Uh, so you need to be remain attached with masajid, attached masajid. actively, okay. and trust your iman. Trust your iman. that your iman is putting you on the right direction. Uh, Subhanallah. And and I would highly recommend this community. To take the classes of Mawlana Ibrahim Sahib every weekend, make some qurbani, make some. And there are people who are taking those classes. Uh, I would encourage everyone make dua for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The Mawlana Ibrahim Sahib, Mashallah, very painstakingly teaches those classes every weekend. He comes in Saturday morning and Sunday morning. So please take those classes. You cannot understand these issues in five minutes. In five minutes. Uh, Yes, this is an incorrect approach. You have to invest your lifetime to understand what is fard and what is wajib, right? So, Allah Masalli Ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So, there are four faraid of wudu. How many? Four faraid of wudu. Without which a wudu does not take place. Without which wudu does not take place. Okay. Number one. Bigger. Number one. Because I want all of you to wake. Right? Washing the face, Washing from, the face from, the from the forehead to the lower portion the lower of the chin, and, the chin. And, and from one ear lobe, from from one ear lobe to, the to the other. Number two. Number two. Washing, Washing of both the arms. Both arms. Okay. Number three. Number three. Doing massa of a quarter of the head of once. Number four, washing off 
both the feet, including the ankles, once. Okay, and I'm not touching the the issue of masa. That's uh, it's going to take a long time, right? But if you go to Talimul Haq, it's masa has been uh, that masala that ruling has been explained thoroughly, right? On which socks the masa takes place? On which socks the masa? does not take place, right? It has conditions, sharaiq attached with it, right? So, so understand how, what, how does wudu? Then wudu had 13 sunnah. Wudu had? 13 So if you leave a sunnah because of an exceptional situation, because of? It's, the water is very, very cold. You're traveling between New York and Virginia, and and you stop at a rest area to make wudu, and there's a cold water. It happened to us. Then you take a, then you can leave Sunnah and make Tawbah and Safa. And but the wudu will take place so long you fulfill the, the four fraid mashallah shukr Right. This is called Ilm al Fiqh, it's called Tafaqqu fi al-Din. When I mention about four Imams, we love and respect Imam ibn Taymiyyah. But see what's the difference is between Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam ibn Taymiyyah. There's an eight years, eight, 800 years difference. Huh? Read Islamic history with an open mind. Huh? I mean, we love Imam Ibn Taymiyyah. Huh? Uh, we have respect for Imam Al-Bani and all these, uh, mashallah, great ulma of Saudi Arabia, mashallah. We love and respect them, mashallah. Huh? But you need to have a bigger picture, okay? Now, Imam Abu Hanifa was born in 70 Hijri. When was he born? 70 Hijri. And he died in 150 Hijri. He died in? 150 Hijri. And Imam Bukhari was born in 194 Hijri. He was born in? 44 years later. Please, you know, have an open mind. Be just, it is closest to being God fearing. Have Husnizan with your earlier Ulama and Mashaik. Right? Having negative opinion about earlier ulama and muhaddasin and fuqah, that is a sign of rawafid. That's a sign of rawafid. And rawafid are connected. If you study the history of rawafid, huh, it's like uh, study Quran, study any good tafsir, Surah Al Baqarah, then Surah Al. Al Imran, then Suratun, then Suratun, Maida. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about Ahlul Kitab. Read with an open mind. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them Mahdub and Dalim? What are the reasons? Mazallah, do not become negative about our earlier Fuqaha and Muhaddasin Ikram. Never make this mistake. Never? Or you'll go astray. I'm telling you. I've invested my life uh, and I'm still a Tifle Maktab. I'm still a very humble student. Uh, I don't know much. So I, I humbly request you to trust in earlier ulama and fuqa, right? I can die next minute, right? So I am passing it on to all of you. The, this, the stuff that I'm saying, it's very, very important stuff. Now, let's move on. Then we go to Ghusle Janabat. We go to Ghusle Janabat. Ghusle Okay. There are three fried of Ghusle Janabat. Three fried of and it's also known as wajib ghusl, right? Then, because you're all growing up and it has to deal with haya, but I, it's my duty to teach you this stuff. When husband and wife become intimate, when? 
that they have to take this shower. Or, subhanallah, sister finishes her 10 days. Sister finishes her, and she's Akla and Baraga Sin and Ed of Hazrat. You need to wake up. Hmm? We, we have to do a lot of work. Right? Can't, can't be sleeping all the time. Or a young man who is Aqil and Balin, who is? Aqil and Balin. And he has an ikhtaram. Hmm? Then he has to take this wusun. So there are three fried. There are how many? Three fried. Passing water, number one, passing water into and out of the mouth. That is gargling. That is number two. Putting water into the nostrils. Right? Number three, passing water over the entire body. Okay? Now, and it has five sunan. It has uh, washing hands up to the wrist. Number two, washing private parts and the parts for which uncleanliness, nijasat, impurity is found. Number three, knee of washing of hukmi nijasat. Number four, making wudu before washing the body. Number five, then passing water over the whole body three times and may Allah reward I was in Dubai before I came to America right and there was an ha Hafiz and I would go to him I used to work I would work during the day at an institution and in the evening I would go to him to memorize Quran and may Allah reward him he taught me this if he's alive may Allah reward him if he's gone may Allah make his garden a garden from gardens of paradise as a young man and I, I could not complete my hips this is one of my regrets, uh, but I like to see young people at WFC becoming office. That gives me a deep sense of fulfillment. But I could never become office. But I, for a long time, I would go to him in the evening. Uh, Alhamdulillah, this was my youth in Dubai. My father had passed away, and I had left Pakistan, and I was in Dubai before I came to America. Allahu Akbar Kabira. And he taught me this that you have to wet your finger, you have to and put it in your belly button. Put it in your when you take Usla Janabat. When you take it's very important. Remember that. Can you remember it? Yes. Are you gonna forget? Remember it. And also, inshaAllah, this these areas have to be wet. And between the toes, right? Because if you don't wet them and the water doesn't go there, they can remain dry. So make sure you do that, this stuff because you're all growing up and this is natural stuff. Everyone goes through it, right? We are all human beings. Subhanallah. Wa bihamdihi subhanallah. Now, before we come to the um, uh, Before we come to etiquette of bathroom, let's go through Islamic concept of purification. Islamic concept of purification. There's a chapter in Hazaj's book. I believe the name of the book is 
Lahore se ta khap ke samar ka do bukhara and it's been translated in English I believe that's it or in namaz ke sarar ramuz one of the two the Hazrat Ji has a detailed chapter about Tahara right and we made these notes from that that chapter may Allah reward brother will help me so let's go over it huh so I want you to remain engaged and not fall asleep please huh we have been sent to this dunya to remain awake to remain awake to stay awake we have we are shuhda ala nas we are we are witness unto the mankind we are the umma of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam we have a responsibility we have a duty to learn our religion to learn our religion and practice it and and she and 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 teach this knowledge to others so huh? responsibility that's why each and every one of us is sitting in sunnah it uh it's very important so we are here we have a mission to complete we we have a mission to complete and that is to practice our religion peacefully to practice our religion and share it with others and make pray for non muslims pray for non muslims we want all non muslims to go to paradise with us huh? by reciting la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah there is none but the but the worship of Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of Allah the next thing is we will rest in our graves we will rest in our graves that's where we will rest inshallah and our graves will be gardens from gardens of paradise our graves will be and and we will be awarded paradise will be inshallah but we have to do work in this dunya we can't fall asleep it's very important we have a responsibility each every and every one of us in late 80s in mid 80s i would make brochures out spend money out of my pocket and there was a printer he was from either india or bangladesh he would help me he would give me the discount mm-hmm. i had a good friendly relationship with him and i would give that brochure to a lot of non muslims mm-hmm. and maybe sometime i i think that paid off that paid off the allah subhanahu wa taala looked at my that humble deed that this young man in America loved my religion to an extent that he was giving brochures to non-Muslims say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide you you have to make sacrifices first you have to if you don't you're not paying you're not even changing your routine in Ramadan you want your children to be pious you want paradise from Allah well I hope you get it But that routine is not a right routine. If your routine is not even, you don't even change your routine in. You can't even come to the masjid to listen Quran in salat al tarawih. I mean, what can I say? I can only make dua. Please, uh, our routine should change in Ramadan. It should change in Ramadan. We should do mujahida, riyazat, mushabbat. That's what Ramadan is all about. Okay. Yeah, I know you can make tarawih at home. I know the masala. But will that please Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? By making little efforts, you can come to masjid. How about all the other brothers and sisters who are coming to masjid and listening to Quran? They have to work tomorrow, right? They're tired, right? But they're doing it because this Quran will become their shafi on the day of judgment. Will they come? what will happen to you then so we have to be very serious so because you are young people so i'm sharing some of my stuff with you right now let's get
get into it and, and will be done soon, inshallah. Let's say together, importance of purification. Allah says in Quran, in it, there are people who like to observe purity and Allah loves those observing purity. Verse number 108, Surah At-Tawbah. And also says, and purify your clothes. And also, eat from the pure things and act righteously. Prophet said, purity is half of your Iman. Cleansiness and purity. Something may be regarded as clean if it does not have dirt or filth on it. But in the view of Sharia, it may not be pure. Ordinary bath or washing with water and soap may clean a person after menstruation. Bleeding, ejaculation or sexual interaction. But the purity can only be achieved after following the Sharia essentials for purification. Dry and wet cleanliness. Please pay attention to it because I'm noticing dry door handles at the bathroom. And I'm coming to it. Uh, let me. It's, door handles of bathroom are nudges. They are. Nudges. Never touch them with wet hands. Never. The impurity does not transfer when body or the object are dry. Impurity spreads when at least one is wet. For example, wet feet when it touches bathroom floor or other object or wet hand touches filthy object such as door, knob, impurity transfers from object to the body. Existing the bathroom with wet feet and stepping on the outside floor, carpet or prayer rug transfer, bathroom fill to the whole house. It is extremely important to exit the bathroom with dry hands. Someone in this masjid cares about the bathrooms, right? And that's why you have plenty of towel papers and toilet papers, right? Yes. Yeah. Make off from him. Okay? Yes? Yes. Give him dua. Yes? Dua? Give him dua. Yeah, it took some effort to get to off from you, brothers. All right. <clears throat> Dry and wet cleanliness. Let's continue. I just want to make sure everyone is awake and engaged. Dry and the impurity does not transfer when the body or the object are dry. Impurity spreads when at least one is wet. For example, wet feet when it touches bathroom floor or other object, or wet hands touches filthy object such as door, doorknob. <coughs> impurity, uh, impurity transfers from object to the body. Ex exiting the bathroom with wet feet and stepping on the outside floor. Carpet 
or prayer transfer, bathroom filled to the whole mosque or to the whole house. It is extremely important to exit the bathroom with dry hands and, and feet. Existing the bathroom, exiting the bathroom with wet slippers has the same consequences. Purity of the body. When a person relieves oneself in the toilet through defecation or urination, then one must dry the remaining drops of urine with toilet paper, then remove the feces with toilet paper. Pour water over impure area and rub with hand to clean. Do this three times or until you are positive that the film has washed away. If water is not available, one should try to clean fill with toilet paper again and again until the toilet paper comes out dry. When bath becomes obligatory, uh, do it in such a way that water reaches the inside of the throat. Wash the nose in such a way that water reaches the soft bone. Pour water over the whole body in such a way that not even a single hair remains dry. Purity of the place. In bathroom, only slippers made of water repellent material should be used. The one with absorbable, absorbable material have the tendency to absorb film and spread to other places when using a floor, a, 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 a toilet. Great care should be taken so that urine does not splash off the side of toilet to inner ankles. Urinating the standing should be avoided for the same per reason. When using toilet seat, one must be extremely careful that the rim of the uh, toilet is dry. If it is wet, then it is necessary to dry the seat well with toilet paper. Uh, okay. Then of course there is a purity of senses from sins, purity of food, uh, and all that stuff. But before I close, uh, when we enter into bathroom, put your left foot first. Put your and make this dua: Allahumma in the albuqa, in the khubase, al khabais. Because. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us there are devils inside the bathroom. So, shayateen, jinnah, they are inside the bathroom. So we must seek Allah's protection before we went in there, right? Before we go in there. Now, living bathroom, living, we put right foot first and we say, O Faranaka, at least. Okay. Uh, when you go to urinate, then make sure the toilet seat is dry. Toilet seat is dry. Sometimes people stand and urinate. Sometimes people stand and urinate. And there are yellow splashes you can see on toilet seat. So if you are going to urinate, you dry it to, 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 to remove it with toilet paper. And then you put a layers of toilet paper on it. Do not sit on a 
naked if you are just going to urinate do not sit on a naked toilet seat do not sit on a naked toilet you put and then you sit down and then you urinate and use water and you dry it now when you are going to do number 2 stuff right you to do you are going to perform karnama then what you do is you take water very carefully it doesn't does not fall on the floor and you wash it first dry it then wash it put water three times then try it then yeah. then you sit down otherwise if there is a heat index 100 degree outside huh and you sit on a nudges toilet seat your thigh thighs begin to sweat the sweat transfers then your thighs become nudges leaving the bathroom leaving yeah. make sure you do not touch wet door handles with wet hands i was uh, at a health clinic here in virginia and i used their bathroom and it says very clearly do not touch anything with wet hands when in early it is a very harmful disease begin to spread in early it is i still remember in america then they came up with toilet coverings there were no toilet coverings before that see the medical science led them to that conclusion and there was a big hue and cry in media about um, how diseases are, are, are spreading so alhamdulillah we should appreciate islam we should appreciate islam we should appreciate Quran and Sunnah, and 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 uh, and if I attended the whole seminar in the late nineties, week-long long seminar, and was conducted by Hazrat Jinnawar Prakatum, there were a lot of ulama there, and it was a, a when we read the books of fiqh, Kitabu Tahara comes before Kitabu Salah, Kitabu. And also books of Hadis. Kitabu Tahara comes before Kitabu Salam. And the the gist of that one week long seminar was: if your Tahara is Kamil, if your your Salah is going to be Kamil. If your Tahara is faulty, if you are Your salah is going to be. Oh, oh, oh. <coughs> you use fragrance salah. Salah is you know. Raka ten two raka. Whether it's two raka sunnah or fajr, or whether it's two raka of tahiyatul masjid or tahiyatul wudu, or whether it's two raka of ishraq or charge. Or two raka after zohar, or after maghrib. It's a very special prayer. You're disconnected from every everyone else. How Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has praised people of paradise in Surah Al Mu'minun. Allahu Billahi min al-Shaytan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون ما شاء الله خشوع عند الصلاة you're connected with Allah سبحانه وتعالى you're disconnected from this material world and you're connected with Allah huh? spiritual world with Allah then how Allah سبحانه وتعالى has praised uh, in 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 سورة المعارج إن الإنسان خلق هلوع إذا مسه الشر جزوع وإذا مسه الخير منوع then Allah سبحانه وتعالى says إلا المسلمين سبحان الله إلا الذين هم على صلاتهم دائمون so if we 
want to perfect our prayer, make it beautiful, make it valuable in the sight of our beloved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you have to do all this stuff. Use fragrance, use miswak. Of course, when we are not fasting, we should use toothbrush, we should use toothpaste. It's important because we eat a lot. We We eat a lot. But miswak is a very special sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So use miswak, use fragrance, and subhanallah, and you're connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Work on your prayer. Make it beautiful. Make it beautiful. Beautiful. And then inshallah, you see results. Trust me, some and if you do muraqaba, if you do muraqaba, muraqaba will give you khushu. Muraqaba will give you consciousness. Uh, what is the terminology they are using nowadays? Mindfulness. This is the terminology they are using a lot in their articles. Mindfulness. Muraqaba will give you that. And, and then believe me, you develop sometimes kafiyah that you don't want to end your salah. And because we do not sit with mashayikh, we think we need to learn everything but not religion. Religion I know. Religion I know. We don't sit with mashayikh, we don't learn, we don't work on our salah. We offer those Mare bandi ki namaze. What is this? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Salah, subhanallah. Just imagine the salah of Sayyidatul Fatma to Zahra al Subhanallah. This is the salah of Sahaba, the salah of Tabi'een. Man, uh, the son of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Just imagine what kind of salat that must have been. A man said, "I'm going to see the schedule of Imam Abu Hanifa." So he sat down in his dars in the morning. Imam sab taught until zohar. Then he resumed his class after after Zohar. So then, after Isha went, he went home. So he said, now Imam Sahib is going to go to sleep. He said, but let me check it out. He, he stuck around. And he saw after a little while, Imam Sahib came back to the masjid. Changed his clothes. Imam Sahib used to wear a lot of fragrance. He took, had taken shower, fresh, and he made Nia and he was busy until Fajr. You think the entire Bengal accepted Islam, Bangladesh, Khali Muinuddin Chishti Rahmatullah would make his Isha Fajr with the Wudu of Isha. We are missing a lot, are you? We are missing? Get back, do your muraqaba and work on your salah inshallah. And don't worry about anything else. Everything will fall in its place inshallah. We'll do a little bit of muraqaba inshallah. Yes, Allah. The Rahm, Rahm of Allah is coming. It's entering, entering into my heart. The darkness of my heart is going away and my heart in the state of Gratitude is saying, Allah, Allah, Allah.